Welcome back to another episode of Dave and Jay's Powerbomb. I'm Dave. This is Jay. And we are recapping April 8th's episode of AEW Dynamite. Dynamite. And in lieu of other company mania, where their atmosphere was ominous and dark and filled with negative energy and no one in attendance at all, this week was completely the opposite on AEW Dynamite. Yep, we had the heels and the faces again, which was totally... Oh, it just makes the show for in these dire times of shitty entertainment. Yeah, You know, entertain us with the Roman Colosseum, distract us with your magnificent medias. Yeah, absolutely. Like, we had, again, even more faces and even more heels on opposite sides, opposite sides of the ring. And it was a great atmosphere, very energetic, especially in times like these, as my homie Jay said right here. So uh, we opened the show with Jake Roberts doing his uh, Louisiana backwoods thing. Shh. Okay. Why don't you come on down to my backwoods? <laughs> we can all have some barbecue and eat some armadillo. Yes. We can drink some Lone Star, but mine will be the point five stuff because that would just be me maybe breaking my throwing over of uh, artificial alcoholics anonymous thing. So come on down and meet Murderhawk and die. Yeah, so that's pretty much how that went. And uh, after and uh, Chris Jericho, he was introduced on commentary. He did a uh, commentary of Tony Skiovan yeah. the entire night, which was brilliant. Really brought a big night theme to tonight. They killed other company mania, man. Like we won't even talk about other company mania. But on with the show. Lance Archer versus they didn't even give his opponent's name. The Green Jobber. We didn't just title. Him. Yeah. And, um, it was, it was really much to say about the action. It was just like a, a super squash match. Oh, yeah. And he won uh, with the uh, the Marco Stunt Destroyer. Yeah, the Marco the, Stunt Destroyer. Uh, uh, yeah. Another sacrificial lamb for Jake Roberts to throw on the Louisiana Backwoods Fire Grill. And uh, so, yeah, he won doing that devastating Marco Stunt Destroyer. And then... Um, Match of the night coming up in yes, in both our opinions. Was the match of the night, and it was great. This women's revolution that's been occurring in AEW, girl power. I'm all for it. We had Doctor Britt Baker DDS versus Hikiro Shida, and this was just an amazing effing match. Yeah, like it was back and forth. Like Britt Baker, like she can tell a story, and she did in this match. Like, if we had Billy Gunn in, in attendance, and Britt Baker pulls off the famous her and yeah. throws <laughs> it in, in uh, Billy Gunn's face a bit there. Yeah, yeah. and that was, that was I mean, super cute. Yeah, and she's just looking sexy as hell, and that doesn't hurt either. <laughs> and the match was crazy. And then, yeah, talk about uh, what happened to uh, Dr. Britt there. Like, it was awesome. Like, it's just match of the night. Women's match of the year so far. Yeah, well. It looked like there was a, I can't remember what move it was, but there was a, uh, a move where the face was definitely was close to a harder part of the body. And during the move, I guess it must have hit Baker's nose and caused her to huge, have a huge nosebleed. And at first, Dave was like, oh, she cut herself. And I'm like, no, nah, man. <laughs> she she, she played nose out. <laughs> she wanted the extra juice. Like, no, nah, it was real. Yeah. yeah. She didn't pull no Cody Rhodes and have a big bump on his forehead <laughs> the whole time. Let's keep Brit pretty. And um, so, Bloody Brit Baker yeah. is uh, what she's going to be known for now in uh, the hearts of many. And yeah, it was a great match. And then she's still going despite bleeding all over the place. She's just having fun with it, turning into Joaquin Phoenix Joker. I loved seeing it. Oh yeah, but, like she totally like a, as a like a she does, She's definitely like the a, a, a athlete. But Britt Baker, bloody Britt Baker, yeah, was definitely this charismatic character. You were following her and her... She went her above action. and beyond. She was like a uh, top performer for... Keep blowing us away. Yeah, it, Thank you. it was great. It was like one of those matches where they should have had like an earpiece in the ref's ear to be like... Yeah, like... Hey, let's, do, you, let's... Do, you know what, do you know what Jericho was probably saying in, in, the, in the earpiece? Click like and subscribe. 
<laughs> but yeah, they should have changed to finish like mid match or something. Like it was awesome. Yeah. And like Britt should have got the win, but uh, it was Akito Shira hitting that running knee strike and yeah. one, two, three. Great match, women's match of the year thus far. And I'm gonna say both our opinions. Yeah. And uh, bring on the NATO beast. Yeah, it's coming. And uh, so then that was an amazing match. And then we uh, have a promo. It's Michael Nakazawa and Kenny Omega. They're in like some trailer dressing room getting ready. And Nakazawa's talking shit about best friends. He's saying that uh, Kenny Omega and Nakazawa are uh, better friend, better best friends than the best friends. And then who comes out of the bathroom as this is being said? Orange Cassidy. That's right. And he is none too pleased. What and was he doing in the bathroom? Was he using the fan? <laughs> <laughs> who knows what those guys get up to. They're probably not testing for much these days anyway. And um, so, uh, yeah, he opens the trailer door. Best friends come in. Uh, Chuck and, uh, yeah, Chuck Taylor and Trent. And uh, they're not too pleased. And they're pissed. And they challenge him to a match. And it is up next however there is a promo they're doing a special look at jake hagar and john moxley okay you have 20 seconds to talk about hagar 10 seconds to talk about moxley and then we can move it on john moxley trains in a garage and john Mo and jake hagar trains in a proper gym Jake Hagar trains, does sit-ups while his wife punches him in the abdominals. John Moxley does fucking his little motorbike thing. Not even a motorbike, stationary bike. I don't know, it is whack. Uh, John Moxley, no show, five weeks. He was only on for five minutes. Yeah, five weeks of dynamite, five minutes of Moxley. Hold on. He was an amazing spot-on cameraman tonight. That's how he should relive the remainder of his contract. Just take the title off him, and then if you still have to keep him on like the payroll, like, just have him as a cameraman. He's amazing at it. He, he got everything on tonight, you know, not like last week where he screwed up the best friends saying like, <laughs> my eyes for me. Oh, shit. Best friends moment. Well, Moxley can learn the camera, and I've been learning video editing. I edited last week's video, guys. That's why it wasn't as good as the other videos when it came to the transitions and stuff. But we're a back. team. We're a team. And uh, so, yeah, then um, they did some uh, TNT title tournament talk. Cody is talking about Sean Spears and back and forth, and that matches the main event later on tonight. Yeah. And what happens? We got the best friends, uh, Trent and... Uh, and John, and sorry, I got Moxley on the brain. He infects people, similar to what the planet Earth is going through right now. And Chuck Taylor versus uh, Kenny Omega and Michael Nakazawa. Michael Nakazawa is a tag team match. Excellent tag team match because the boys from Japan totally brought over the whole elements of Japan, and it was totally a refreshing taste to compare to what you'd see at the. Um, other, Other company, company mania yeah. this weekend. It was a two-day event. It sucked. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, really. but to, you know, it, it was so nice to see these like uh, little different kind of little comedy antics, and it really actually worked. I even looked at Dave, and I'm like, he was kind of like not quite. You know, I'm not sure about this. So I'm like, Dave. Are you entertained? He's like, yes. And I'm like, it is working. What was it, the Asian skirt police? Like, uh, the mini skirt police. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, I mean, it was good. It was a little East meets West. And then Jericho's doing commentary. He said that he's going to pull out a fork and cut a bitch. Yeah, I'm going to pull out a fork and cut a bitch. Because they were talking about past great wrestlers, I guess, like the great uh, Buddha or, I don't know, some guys are pulling out forks. And I thought that We was don't fun. have the knowledge that they have. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, I, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> so yeah, then, um, they're doing the best friend spot, like, Omar uh, Cassidy slowly rolls into the ring, yeah, and Trent and Chuck are on either side, but it gets, uh, interrupted, both men's feet get pulled when, yeah. they, when they're going for the hug, and, um... And Kenny and Michael come on in, and are like, ah, oh, and Orange Cassidy's like... Yeah, no. they wanted to steal the best friend's spot, just like they want to steal the best friend's name. The yeah. name was on the line tonight for the match, I think, is what it was. Oh, pretty well. 
if I caught the trailer talk, talk correctly. And like, yeah, it was a great match. They interrupted the best friend spot. And um, you know what, though? Um, there's a lot of baby oil going around. He was yeah, trying to hit those chops. Trent was trying to hit those chops on Michael Nakazawa. Here, hit him on me. Whoa! What the hell? Oof. Slid. Yeah! Oh, what the crap? What's going on? Because of the baby oil. <laughs> Get that all in there. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was Sorry, a great I match. Need a drink. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. You go hang out. Disinfect yourself. But, um,. So it was an amazing match, amazing match, and uh, yeah, best. Uh, I don't know if it was the best male match in the night. It was a great match tonight, right? Like, yeah. I mean, great show. Like, it was way better than other company mania in every single way. Yeah. And um, even the commentary, Le Champion. But at the end of the night, just desserts to the best friends. They pull it off with Stomp Zero. They yeah. get the pin over Michael Nakazawa. One, two, three. Huge win for best friends. Getting revenge over Kenny Omega. For that not quite draw last week. And then you have a beautiful moment of everybody doing the best friend super hug thing. That's right. It was it was a five way best friend super hug thing called the quarantine police. I hope they don't though. And uh, so then um, we it was a beautiful ending and we had a promo from uh, the exalted one. Yeah, number three. Uh, the Exalted One, I uh, got him back here with me to help me host the podcast, and not the podcast, the Powerbomb, and I'm appreciative. And, uh, however, my shirt might be a little too wrinkly for the Exalted One's liking. No, no, I'm just making sure I don't, yeah. get, I don't want to get in uh, trouble. You don't want to get demoted to number four. No, I, man, I always want to be number three. <laughs> <laughs> Penelope? <laughs> Penelope three? Penelope three, where are you? So yeah, the, exal the exalted one gets upset because uh, everyone's shirts wrinkle, but there's this one member um, who has a tie on, and the exalted one is impressed, and he takes them with him into Ben's uh, SUV, and I guess they go to the event tonight, but before that, Britt Baker comes out, her nose is busted open. She's looking sexy as hell. And um, she's telling people she's a role model for the people. And I think I can speak for number three and Jay and the Pokeroo on this one uh, when we say that we agree with that 100%. And uh, then we do another little uh, promo uh, promoting uh, the uh, empty arena, mm -hmm. uh, falls count anywhere, no holds barred match. I don't know if it's no falls count anywhere, but yeah, and uh, Moxley's doing a lot of shit talking, and Hagar's doing some talking that he clearly can back up, yeah. and Moxley's still no show, five minutes in five weeks. If that's a champion, I don't know. What, I don't want to know what a loser looks like. So on at the show, um, yeah, Hagar is uh, legitimacy personified, according to him, and I don't disagree. And then uh, we're hey, on the Hardy compound. There was somebody in my seat. Wasn't me. Oh, wasn't me. Oh, <laughs> Jay, you're back. Yeah. <laughs> Number three was here for a second. It got real quiet around here. So but, uh, I heard Hot Hardy was talking shit about the boys. He was talking some serious shit about Spanish God. He was calling Sammy Guevara a false god, and I don't like hearing that at all. You know, we don't have to discuss this really because we just don't agree. Yeah, we okay. disagree. At and what, all. what else did we not agree with? I don't know. I gotta take a closer look here. So, uh, yeah. So what? <laughs> a little peek behind the curtain here, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, yeah, he's upset with Le Champion because uh, Le Champion's trying to recruit Vanguard One, and then I. Uh, he ripped Jay off. Uh, Matt Hardy starts talking about dumpster fires, and we all know that's how Jay likes to refer to uh, your AEW champion. And, oh, um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so then Matt Hardy at the end challenges Jericho and the boys, I think, to an elite deletion match at the Hardy compound uh, at a date to be determined. Yeah, why doesn't Jake the Snake, you know, promoting this one? Why don't you come on down to the Hardy compound? We can have a couple beers with Vanguard One. <laughs> Non-alcoholic beers with Jake the Snake. Oh my god, I'd rather do ecstasy with Skrillex. All right, well, what's going on here? Oh, we got another match. Uh, we got a jobber named Lee Johnson. Oh, did I blow the finish? Versus the Exalted One. What do you think happened here? Uh, we had a Marco Stunt cat cameo. He's kind of like just shy, I guess. Yeah. I, yeah, and um, <laughs> there's a squash match. Yeah. Uh, there's a spinning lariat clothesline that the Exalted One uh, pulled off. One, two, three, big win. Not really a big win, but Exalted yeah. One won, won nonetheless. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> great AEW Dynamite debut, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it had to be this way. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> dude. <laughs> like, 
Tale number three. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, at this part of the show, we just want to go through our predictions for this uh, highly anticipated uh, TNT Championship uh, tournament match. Um, I believe the first round is uh, tonight's match, yeah. uh, Cody versus the chairman, Sean Spears, so we won't give our yeah, predictions we'll for that. that. And then we got Sammy versus uh, Darby. That's right. That's that's tough to call. You know, That's um, really tough to call. We, we, we're totally inner circle fanboys. Yeah. We love the boys. Yeah. And uh, I want to I, I say uh, Sammy Guevara will win, but you know what? I've actually been doing, watching a lot of documentaries lately, and now I'm like, wow, Darby Allen. I'm actually rising star, new title out there. This might really project that guy to the next level. Like, um, I, I, like a, I don't really see Spanish God really needing that right now because how he's working with the champion, but Darby Allen, I think he, he will win this one. And I think he will win the tournament, and it will project him to the like the next level superstar that what he deserves to be because he's been working really hard. He even had his arm cut open by all ego Ethan Page. Let's split the vote. He's going coffin dropper. I'm going Spanish sex guide. All right, and then I think the next brackets on the other side of uh, the uh, bracket tournament chart thing is. Um, Dustin Rhodes mm -hmm. and who is he facing again? Is this Spears? No, Spears is facing Cody no, okay. tonight in the main event. Uh, Dustin Rhodes is facing oh Kip Saban. Oh, Dustin Rhodes is gonna win that one. We like what Kip Saban <laughs> and uh, Penelope is doing, but uh, yeah, there's gonna be a fair bit of nepotism probably. So uh, yeah. Dustin Rhodes and he is a legend. He deserves it. And then it's uh, the final one is uh, Murder Hawk, uh, Lance Archer versus Hulk Cabana. Yeah. And uh, thanks for coming out, Colt. Like you're innovative, but Murder Hawk's getting the push here. I don't know. That's gonna be a. It's gonna be. Yeah. A, I think it's you're going be a, cold, eh? I'm going, I'm going Murder Hawk. I'm gonna go cold. I'm think, going Murder Hawk. All right. I think, right. I think All right. these guys are gonna work together and create a fantastic match, and we're gonna have a ending that just blows us away either way. It's going to be good, but, you know... This is interesting, Cabana. because we're splitting votes here. We're agreed on a plaid dust, but every other one we're splitting, and we can't tell tonight's first one, because that's our main event. Yeah, All right. well, we already know who we're fanboys of, so whatever. <laughs> and uh, we're in the main event right now. It's yeah. uh, Chairman Sean Spears versus Cody, Cody, do not say his last name, Rhodes, and uh, it's the main event. Hey, hold on. I worked for this other company, and it... Took something down the road. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And Jericho, uh, when they were talking about this match, said that Cody should go for the women's title. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Put that thing <laughs> inside out, Cody. Oh, boy. Okay. And then, um, so it was a great production tonight. Uh, Shiovoni um, had a slight production botch near the end, calling that last commercial. They went, actually didn't go into that commercial. Yeah. But uh, whatever. Him and Britt Baker are good friends, so it's cool. Let's slide. And then, um, yeah, they're, going, they're doing it. Like uh, Jericho's saying, like, yeah, like Aubrey's letting it go. It's playoff rules. Because, like, they let some things slide. And it was yeah. great, right? Pulled out the belt. Yeah. Like spears on the back. Yeah, so, like. I was like, this one's for MJF. I love oh. you. <laughs> I know. Cody's all about the lashes. Like, it's something he's got to work through. He's got something, yeah. And he's puffing cigars on AEW Dark. We're not going into Dark, though. We'll let Rocco's talk show he's, handle he's, that. He's initiating the, uh, the frat boy rules. <laughs> oh, the hazing. I didn't even think of that. He is a frat boy. Is, yeah, you finally see what I'm saying about Cody Rose. He's, he looks like some 1980s frat boy villain. But then Cody had, got his frat boy friend, Pineapple Pete, to like mug Sean Spears, right? Pineapple Pete. Yeah, so the, they're they're Hashtag mugging Sean Spears, and like uh, Cody runs in there. I don't know if he knees him or elbows him, but yeah, he does that. And then um, Sean Spears takes the uh, the covering off the railing, uh, like it looks like a futon mattress uh, thing or something. Yeah, and then it's just guardrail. Yeah, and Jericho's all impressed. He's like, I didn't know it comes off like that. Yeah, I'm gonna use that for next time. <laughs> so that's good. Maybe Sean Spears has a little in with the inner circle because him and Sammy work well together. Yeah. And um, so then they uh, they set it up against the ring apron outside the ring, and then uh, Sean Spears does this crazy suplex that like dents the Cody's body, dents the whole railing. Yeah. And that was for, crazy. For a while, I was like, did he actually? <laughs> hurt there he might have might have been like, some rib action there like yeah, who knows they, right they, that definitely hurts somebody 
And then they had another spot near the end where I, I thought it was over. Like I thought Sean Spears had this thing won at that point. And um, basically they took out a table. And then uh, Sean Spears is going for his uh, C4 oh, yeah. C4 Death C4 Valley driver the, thing. Over the, yeah. yeah, over the ropes. He's holding the, the ropes tables. for dear life. And then he's just like, okay, well, I'm going to chuck you the other way then. And the <laughs> table's there. Cody goes crashing through it. And his wife's checking on him. And it was pretty intense. But he gets him back into the ring somehow or something. So then, yeah, at the end, uh, Sean Spears goes for the C4 uh, Death Valley driver again. Yeah. Cody uh, squiggles out of there and uh, nails... Crossroads times two. <laughs> yeah, two crossroads. Goes for the pin. Yeah. Thought it was over. I was already writing in the notes here, like, okay, crossroads times two. A win by Cody pinfall. As I'm, like, in mid-writing, kick out! Sean Spears kick out! Like, holy effing shitballs. Like, it's pretty crazy, right? Like, this was better than other company mania in any other way. Every yeah. other way. And then, so, yeah, like, Cody can't put the man away. Finally, he's able to uh, hook in that figure four leg lock, and um, this was never done in a match before. Like due to onset brain damage from the prior two crossroads, Sean Spears was like unable to even raise his shoulders. He's there like twitching, doing the Macarena or something, and um, he, he was done. One, and Aubrey's two, uh, three. He, he was like uh, uh, he was trying to relieve the pressure from the figure four, <laughs> and uh, he couldn't, and uh, he caused him a match by. Yeah. But Sean Spears, man, like, he's he's right there. Like, I mean, he took Cody to the limit, man. Like, he kicked out after Crossroads times two. Like, <laughs> shit is real, right? Like, like, he might be an inner circle prospect. Like, who knows down the line, right? But yeah, this was an excellent show. And if I was to rate this to, I don't know, the five hours of other company mania or whatever. Oh, that's definitely a better production. There, this is way better in two hours. I think that they should extend AEW to three hours and then you force the other company, NXT, to go to three hours and they don't have the depth and roster at all that AEW has and then that's how you force NXT out of business and win this war, baby. I say no because you just can't jump onto three hours with a two hours production. First of all, that's one hour more of writing for the creators to do. That's more people that you got to put in that's putting more strain on your company that is still growing. No, don't. Year and a half down the road? Sure, but not now. All oh. right, well, it was an excellent Shut show. Up, Dave. And we're signing off here from. That's our... probably the smartest thing Dave said tonight. Oh, wow. All right, well, for Dave and Jay, this is Dave, Dave and Jay's, Jay's Powerbomb! Power